My grandmother is dead. According to Vienna's city records, Yad Vashem's records, the archival records at Auschwitz-Birkenau, my grandmother entered the war or the camps too late for the Germans to keep track of her life. Just a mistake. You don't, it doesn't bother you? No, I'm here. My grandmother has never formally shared her story with me personally. So I've been curious about this for a very long time and I don't feel it right to be asking my other family members about her story because I would rather hear it from her. So in a way, this is really a documentary for myself. I want her to be able to tell her story and because I know that she'll only do it if she's prompted by her grandchildren or her children, then I figured I need to ask her to tell me this story because I want to know it and I also want to share it. Do you ever formally talk about your experiences after the war? Yeah, in school sometimes. How often? Hmm? Four or five times. Did you like to do it? Yes and no. Why not? Because I'm not a public person. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I just, uh, I was asked to do it, so I did it. It has to mean something to her when her own granddaughter really wants to know these stories to a point where she's putting a camera in front of her and begging her to speak. She knows that we care and we're curious and we love her and we want to know these things. And not only do we want to know these things, but we want to share them because they're important. When we were found out, I went to city jail and I stayed there for three weeks. And then we went on transport to Birkenau. I stayed in Birkenau until October. And from there, they were looking for German-speaking uh, prisoners. And uh, we were transported to Germany to work in an ammunition factory. Curious. I want to know these things, and she's 85 or up in her 80s. How much more time do I really have to hear these things from her before I have to read it in a book or read it from my aunt's transcripts? As much as I hate it, the mouth to mouth conversation is limited. Yeah, we had to stand up in, in the morning, we would get up, you know, and they would count that everybody is there. And if, God forbid, somebody was missing, you stayed there until they found them. And then they killed them right in front of you. Did you ever see someone get killed? Yeah, once. Did you look? No. Cry? I was sad, but I don't think I cried. I've seen her shed one, a few tears, and that was when we went to Auschwitz and we were at, in front of the ash pool and there are four memorial um, tombstones um, and they say in memory of the victims who perished in the Shoah and specifically those who were at the Auschwitz-Birkenau crematorium and that's essentially the first time that she ever visited her parents and her brother's grave. As it's traditionally done in Judaism, you put a rock on the tombstone of a loved one. So she put a rock on each of the four memorials. And that's the only time I've ever seen her cry. With my memories? They are there. Memories you don't forget, but you don't dwell on them. Did you want to go back? Not really. Why not? Because I've been there, and uh, I knew what it was, and I had no 
interest of going back, but I was glad to be able to go back with all of you because uh, it was the ultimate revenge. I came back with seven grandchildren and uh, three of my own. So uh, it was really a love, it was a very positive experience.